Welcome, everybody. I'm speaking today with Mark Senandella, the founder and CEO of TheLadders.com. Mark, unfortunately, could not make it to our national conference in person this year, but I'm really grateful to be sitting here and to have a conversation with Mark about the executive recruiting market and the employment industry. Mark has been a leading force in the job market for over 10 years. And after orchestrating the sale of Hot Jobs to Yahoo.com, Mark realized that there was a gap in the $100,000K marketplace. He created the SalesLadder.com and later Ladders.com, which filled that void. Mark has steered the ladders through terrible economic times and also a very competitive job board market. Mark has many accolades and awards, and even last year, he was awarded the most valuable New York City startup by Business Insider. Mark, as you know, has been at our conference last year, and you know, really, I wanted to get him back here, and he was gracious enough to sit here and have the interview with us today. TheLadders.com made a major business decision this year in changing a little bit of their model. Later on, Mark will be telling you about that. But I really wanted to welcome Mark Senandella, and let's get started. So, Mark, good hey, afternoon. Thanks so much. It's great to be with you. I'm sorry I'm not in the room with you all there. I really enjoyed it last year. That was a great time. Great. I do have some questions that I wanted to ask you. That, yeah, please. Uh, uh, first of all, Mark, from your standpoint at the ladders, what do you make of the disconnect between the disappointing jobs growth uh, we are seeing in the broader economy and the competitive the competition, I'm sorry, for top talent we are seeing in the executive recruiter market. So the job numbers you have to remember are a, um, they tell us about the change that's going on in the marketplace. So a stable unemployment rate, and it's a stable unemployment rate, it's been 9% mm -hmm. for about a year, uh, for about a year now. Uh, uh, what a stable unemployment rate means is that it, companies are refilling their positions at about the same rate that they that they always have. Uh, it's only when unemployment goes down by five points or up by five points that we really feel a difference uh, in, in the market. So whether the unemployment rate is stable at you know nine percent unemployment or seven percent or, or five percent unemployment, what you have to remember is that the vast majority of hires, as you guys know, are replacement hires. Mm -hmm. Bob left, Heather moved out of town, Sally got a promotion to some other, uh, uh, to some other job, and companies are looking to replace that uh, now empty seat. Okay. So the overall numbers uh, mask or mislead us into thinking, hey, nobody's getting hired. And you guys know that's not, uh, that, that, that's not true. But so the competition that we're feeling is in part the fact that hey, it's, uh, replacement hires are always replacement hires and, all, mm -hmm. and, are, uh, and are always there. Second, I think it's people get the, uh, the bunker mentality during a downturn. And we've been in a downturn now for uh, probably going on four years if you, if you go back right. to the end of uh, 2007. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the pain that you have in getting people out is that people aren't as willing to jump uh, as they were in 2006 or 2005. Okay. Uh, I, I do believe I, we are seeing in, in, in Fortune right now, we are seeing a lot of jobs out there. Yeah. Uh, but we're, we, we are, in, a, in what, what I see, is a candidate quality poor market. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hopefully we're able to go out and be able to <clears throat> find those candidates to fill the positions there. I know where you can do that. And what is that? The ladders dot com. So, uh, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not on commercial scale <laughs> no, here no, today. I know. Okay. Another question. Uh, you know, we read every day in the media that we are in unprecedented times with potentially long-term unemployment and yeah. a longer road back than the pre, as you said, 2007 growth levels of yeah. the employment landscape. In your view, what should recruiters be doing to make sure that their business grows through this period? Yeah, so there's only so much we can do at the, uh, at the ballot box about changing how things are uh, going. So we have to accept that the, the market is what the, uh, what the market is. Um, 
and we've been through period downturns before. This is a really bad one, right? The, mm -hmm. the unemployment rate, the long-term unemployment rate uh, are bad. We're starting to actually see some weakness in the job market. Uh, numbers that came out in October started to show uh, uh, the credit card default rate was uh, increasing again for the first time in a long time. So it's a perpetual and ongoing and, 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 and bad market. And so we just have to accept that mm -hmm. and we have to say, well, uh, look, there are some advantages. There aren't going to be a lot of newbies coming into the executive right. search market. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, every, during every upswing, you've got every Tom, Dick, and Harry thinks that they can get uh, they can get into this business because they have a a phone and uh, uh, you know and a and a computer. So why can't they also be a, a executive search? And the uh, extent to which clients are um, more hesitant and more scared and more uh, unsure about what the market ahead for them is, they're really going to want to make sure that each of these positions they fill is done to the, the best that they can. And, you know, left to their own devices, clients sometimes have a challenge acting in their own best interests. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I think what our goal as an industry has to be during this time, uh, and how we'd love to uh, support uh, Fortune, is uh, making sure that you have all the information at your fingertips so that uh, when you go in, you can try to think through, all right, who's really going to be the best fit here? Is it Bill or Sally or Heather uh, that's going to make the most sense uh, in, this, uh, in this position so that the, the client feels that you're really you know, paying attention to them? Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think one of the things that we discuss is the fact of we want to be able to drill down in the candidate's background when we do get a resume from, from the ladders or, or any other source and just have the, that personal conversation with the candidate yeah. to understand why he or she wants to take a position. So you know, over time, everything becomes uh, more commoditized. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, uh, Sony can't sell a Walkman with a cassette deck in it anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, the value of a cassette deck is zero. Uh, iPod is shortly, the actual original iPod is shortly going to be discontinued right. and they're just going to have the iTouch and the, I, and the iPhone. So even that, which was completely amazing a decade ago, is now worth zero. They can't sell it, uh, sell it anymore. Same thing for us in our industry. The things that we uh, generated value out of 10 years ago or 15 years ago, hey, I've got the secret list or hey, nobody else has this resume. That's not the way you can generate value anymore. It's about uh, figuring out what is everybody else doing and how can I do something that's more valuable and better? Mm -hmm. um, and that's why it, uh, it's just so important to really provide that human touch and that human, uh, uh, human contact. I was up speaking yesterday at Harvard Business School and one of the students uh, asked me, well now when you started the ladders, wasn't, why wasn't your goal to uh, disremediate, eliminate all of the headhunters and executive search uh, firms out there? And I told him, look, you can't, right? As an as a internet company, you can't. Like, what we can do really well is provide information, we can provide resumes, we can provide uh, the, the bits and bytes that show up on a computer screen, but recruiting is now, always has been, always will be about that person-to-person -person contact. And so making sure that you go beyond the resume, that you go beyond the job posting to really understand the person sitting in the other chair, that's what's gonna add value because the other stuff's getting commoditized, right. that's going to add value this year and uh, for the decades to come. Again, I love that statement. I love yeah. because that human interaction is really important. Yeah. And it's got the added advantage of being true. Yep, right. that's yes. right. <laughs> Mark, what is the ladders doing to maximize growth opportunities in a difficult employment market? Yeah, so for us, it's the same thing. We, you know, the things that were, were really valuable that for us to do eight years ago, you know, they, those get commoditized uh, over time. When we started off, it was, hey, you can't find the information about these 100K plus candidates anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Well, with all the different, you know, uh, social networks and About Me and all the different uh, sources out there now, uh, you can find a lot of the information just by Googling somebody. You can find a lot of information uh, about them. So for us, it's been about, well, what aren't people doing and what isn't commoditized and how do we add more value? And so what we've, uh, so what we've been looking at uh, from a product feature uh, set is two things. How do we make it that you get more responses from candidates? And that's a lot of stuff that we do over on the candidate side to make sure that they're, they're responding. Uh, and two is how do we get you more information be, than beyond what's just on the page? 
So if you've played around with the system, you know that we have uh, candidate insights, which is we ask candidates questions. How do you feel about going to work today? Great, couldn't be better. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, I'd rather be going anywhere else. And then we turn around and share that information with you, not those particular answers, but we say job satisfaction, high, medium, or low. Or uh, which would you rather take? You know, $10,000 more in salary or a bigger title? And by sharing that information uh, with you, hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight, a little bit of perspective on who is this person I'm picking up the phone to call. Uh, and so that you so rather than spending the first 15 minutes having to do that awkward get to know you, you know, to, if we can help make that shorter, uh, that's better for you, better for us, better for everybody and gives you a little bit more of an advantage relative to everybody else. Hey, you know that, that recruiter called me. They really, uh, they seemed to get me right off the bat. They knew that I was kind of more interested in, you know, uh, moving out of town than staying in town and that I really needed a, a bump in position. I, 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 I really appreciated that, right? So that type of added value to you and to the candidate is what we're, we're, we're trying to do. That's great, that's yeah. great. It, would, it will definitely help us out in, in evaluating and qualifying candidates. So there's a little button there that says, have, have a question that you think we should ask? Mm -hmm. So look, we, we, we only get a few dozen uh, people out of the, what is it, uh, 20,000 recruiters using the system. Only a few dozen come in a week. So we take every one of those pretty seriously. So if you have any advice for us on questions we should ask or how we should do that better, please send them our way because we, we love that information. Okay, that's great. Uh, Mark, what, what do you see as the role of the ladders in the recruiting landscape today? So I guess going back and uh, the second part of my answer to the, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the HBS student was, no, our goal wasn't to disintermediate, disintermediate recruiters. It was to disintermediate the research department, mm -hmm. right? Hey, so make it just easier for uh, recruiters across the country to call us up or to log on to us rather than, uh, uh, you know, go to any other source. So that's what, that's really what our goal is, and that's how we're uh, trying to, uh, to add value and make people's lives better. Okay, okay. And you just announced a new program? Yeah, so in September we, uh, we expanded from just 100K plus jobs to all professional jobs. Mm -hmm. And uh, what goes on behind the scenes is, uh, is pretty interesting. How we've, uh, the best way we've found to describe it is, so previously we were one aisle in the grocery store, just the 100K plus aisle. Now we've got five aisles. Mm -hmm. And so those five aisles are under 60K, 60 to 80K, 80 to 100, 100 to 250, and then we added the super fancy aisle. You know that aisle at the grocery store with all the super fancy stuff? That's where my wife goes, right? Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Uh, the 250K uh, aisle. And uh, just because we have this under 60K aisle doesn't mean we've changed anything in the 100K aisle, and, mm -hmm. and we really haven't. So when you post a job, you tell us, only show this to people in that aisle, right? The 100K aisle or 80 and the 100K aisle or just the 250K aisle. Uh, or when you search, hey, only show me people in uh, this aisle. So that makes it, uh, you still get the same great advantages of the 100K plus. But now, uh, we just heard over and over again from our clients, well, you know, we do some 100K plus jobs, but also do these uh, other jobs. Can you help us there? And so that's why we've, uh, uh, we've expanded. And so the, we'll fail if what we do is we turn into a big mess like you know, the monster board. Mm -hmm. That will fail. And everybody at the ladders knows that. And so we're really focused on how do we keep the aisles clean, right? right? And the aisles pure to what they're supposed to be so that both the job seeker, the candidate, and the uh, recruiter get value out of that connection. So can a $60,000 candidate go into an eighty dollars to $100,000 aisle? No. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, and, the, uh, and then the tools, and we're, we're evolving these, and the tools uh, are designed so that, so if you only do 250K searches, mm -hmm. uh, so your recruiter profile, people under 250K can never see it. Can never see it. Um, and the, the interesting thing around that is the, you know, hey, what do you do when somebody who normally recruits 250K is recruiting their own executive assistant for an 85K job? Do you let people see it? That, so like dealing with those types of exceptions is uh, something we're still quite working through. But by and large, what the system's designed to do is not create more noise mm -hmm. for anybody. That's great, that's great. And, I, and I, in looking at it, I think it'll definitely work. So we're pleased. Yeah, well, you gotta work hard at it. So yeah, yeah. We're, we're, gonna, we're, gonna stay, we're gonna stay 
True to our knitting. And is that open right now? It's open. Mm -hmm. uh, been open since uh, mid-September. Okay, great. In yeah. fact, I just went to, my wife and I just went to a, the announcement that was made at the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, Thank you so much uh, for coming. And it was great, a great affair. And, uh, you know, Mark did a great job uh, in announcing and also praising his team for the work they've done in the past. So, uh, yeah, we got a bunch uh, of great people here. Yeah, so it was great. Uh, Mark, so much of what has been, uh, what we've been hearing as recruiters is about the importance of reaching passive candidates. Do you agree with that idea? And what can you tell us about the mindset of these candidates? Is anybody passive anymore? Really? Uh, you're I mean, probably some, right. Some are, but uh, you know, we've, we compared to 1960, you know, compared to Mad Men or, uh, or Pan Am, right, where, hey, I'm going to work for this company forever. That just doesn't exist anymore. I don't know anybody, or it's the rare person who really thinks, hey, my job is safe from now until the day I retire. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's different. That's, that, that's different. And I think increasingly what we're seeing is, ah, you stay in a job five years and then you move on to the next thing. And increasingly what, uh, what we're hearing is, if you stay in a job more than 10 years, uh, people start to wonder, mm -hmm. right? So you and I have a problem, I guess. <laughs> um, maybe people should wonder, right? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. So, uh, uh, so increasingly, uh, that's, that's what's happening. People really uh, don't stop looking. What we've seen, so uh, on the ladders, uh, we've had, we have five million uh, people sign up for the newsletter. 8 million people ever have signed up and 3 million have unsubscribed over the last uh, uh, eight years. In general, in a newsletter business, when you talk to anybody who does a food newsletter or a stock newsletter, they would say if you had 8 million people sign up over eight years, you're only gonna keep a million of them because people just unsubscribe all the time. Right. And I think, I think the thing to, that that tells you is the fact that we've had so many people you know, stay on our uh, newsletters is um, people are really crazy about job information and they're really very, particularly in this uh, day and age of this economy, are just very interested in keeping on top of what's going on out there, what are my alternatives, hey, I need a lifeline in case something happens out mm -hmm. of the blue. You know, if you look at, I mean, here in Manhattan, if you look at the people who were working at Bear Stearns or at Lehman. They're always looking for a lifeline. <laughs> uh, uh, well, but just, with mean, some of the Lehman people, I mean, uh, their division was a standard boring division. They'd been there 25 years. They'd built up a little nest egg of you know, several million dollars. But you know, for somebody who, I don't know, who had, who had grown up poor and had worked their way through college, done this for 25 years, and then in the space of a couple of weeks, it's all gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, all gone. Yeah. All gone. People have really learned that if it can happen to folks like that, it can happen to me. Mm -hmm. So are, are people truly passive anymore? I don't know. Okay. Good answer. Good. What changes do you see on the horizon for the executive search firms and all the executive recruiters? Are there any changes that you see out there? Uh, things aren't going back to the past. And uh, if you went back in time to talk, and, and talked to you from 20 years ago and showed you the actual technology that you have in your hand today, right? whether it's an iPad or a Blackberry or what your computer does, and you showed that to the person you were 20 years ago, you know, a person 20 years ago would say, what, you live in magic land? I mean, <laughs> how did you, like, that's amazing. Yeah. I can't believe that that's the future. You're making that up. Like, you're really making that up. No way you can have, like, a Google map on a little phone and you, ask, and you can ask it, hey, what's traffic like in the area? Mm -hmm. Like, that can't possibly happen. Like, Pete, you, won't, you wouldn't believe yourself. And I think if, if you think about that, well, what does that mean about the next 10 years? You cannot predict today how you're going to do any of the basics in 10 years. How are you going to buy your clothes? How are you going to buy stocks? How are you going to watch TV? How are you, going to, you can't predict what you're going to, how you're going to do that in 10 years. Is it going to be a floating 3D thing that kind of just levitates over your bed that you watch TV? I don't know. It could be. Who knows? Sure. Like you can't predict that. And so that's the, the, the interesting thing to take away from that is, wow, if, and the experts can't either. If you can't predict how you're going to do some of the basic things in 10 years, how are you really, really going to say that you can predict what your business is going to be like in 10 years? Yeah, I, I, I agree. Technology has really changed, you know, from when I was recruiting 25, 30 years ago and, yeah. and, and today. But I do be, believe that picking up the phone and, as you said, the, that interaction, that human interaction is really an important piece. And we shouldn't forget that. 
Uh, yeah. So, the, so, the, but the interesting, so the interesting thing is, as much as technology changes stuff, we still have all the things that I mentioned are still basic human needs: mm -hmm. eating, entertainment, meeting with friends, uh, working. So the basic human needs don't change, but how we go about them uh, uh, do. So uh, if all these things are going to change, and all you know, hey, all the, all the stuff changes. Uh, but the basic human needs, and in, and in executive recruiting, it's the it's the eyeball to eyeball, mm -hmm. it's the belly to belly that uh, that is still the basic human need. I have to I have to look into the you know his eyes and understand his soul, uh, type of thing. So if that's going to remain the constant, uh, but everything else changes, what does that mean about how we're going to go about our business over the next uh, five or, or ten years? What does that mean about how our clients are going to go about their business? So how you got business from your clients 10 years ago was very di or 20 years ago is very different from how it is today. Mm -hmm. You were kind of expected, oh well yeah, IBM's going to be stable and they'll be around and this division will be here and you know that you can't rely on that uh, uh, today. So what does that mean for the executive recruiter? I, I, I think paradoxically what it means is the more technology changes and the crazier it gets, the more value is going to be had in looking into the eyes of people. That's great. Mm -hmm. I like it. And again, I wanted to thank Mark Sanandella for spending some time with us today. Uh, it's been great. I'm, Thanks so I, much. I, I was hoping that you'd be at the conference, but we'll get you I next year. I feel like I'm there. <laughs> so again, thank you very much, Mark. Hey, and thank been you a so much. Really appreciate thank, it. Take care. Thank you. Bye -bye.